fit to give out to you that uh, I sent it via, re via reply all to the meeting invitation. Uh, Dima, do you want to send it over chat? That's what... Yes, I will do so. And I just started the recording. Excellent. So my name is Gal. There's a handout that um, Dima is going to send over the chat. Uh, it, it contains both a cheat sheet for biological faces and, uh, and, 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 and my, my, my own notes. Um, so maybe a couple of words of warning first. This is not my area of expertise. Uh, I, the, the, I, I happened to need this tool, so I learned it and, start and used it, but I'm far from an expert. This is something that there are people who are actual experts on. And in particular, any mistakes, inaccuracies, etc., are entirely. So, so, so just, just keep in mind that you're hearing it off from an expert. Um, yeah, and I, I apologize, I didn't find how to share in chat, so check your email, please, to, to have a cheat sheet, if you wish. Uh, so, let's see. Oh. So, does, 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 does everyone have the cheat sheet? No. If, if not, speak up or remain silent forever. Okay, so... Uh, as a, so, 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 uh, so, so, as I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert. This is based on uh, a, a single chapter for my thesis. Uh, it's also available on archive. If you search Dixmir Malyavin Galdor in Google, you'll find the paper. Um, so just uh, so that's that's available. It's also available on the cheat sheet. Uh, so now we can, begin. so ah, final apology, uh, as I said before, I have never given a Zoom talk with a whiteboard, so please let me know if something is really wrong or just, uh, I apologize in advance for all the things that will go wrong. Uh, since we're only a very small handful of people, feel free to ask me questions, tell me what you think, uh, get curious, uh, and, tell me, and tell me of all the nonsense I'm saying. Uh, so let me begin my elevator pitch for what this lecture is. So the elevator pitch goes like this. Do the world's topological vector space fill you with dread? Have you been warned that topological vector spaces are strange and fickle beasts whose subtleties are beyond the comprehension of mortal minds? If so, this lecture is for you. So what we're going to be discussing today is mainly uh, something called bornological vector spaces. Um, what are bornological vector spaces? Bornological vector spaces are essentially uh, a substitute for topological vector spaces that works really well in the context of a presentation here. Uh, basically, the, the main thesis I'm going to advocate here in this talk is that people like topologies. Topologies are useful for things, so they naturally tried to use topological structures to, ex to, to, to express the idea of, of what a topological vector space is, but unfortunately, they were wrong. By historical accident, they used the wrong tool for the job, and the correct tool for the job is bornological vector spaces rather than topological ones. Um, so, so, so basically, we're going to be discussing a specific result, so the Dixmirmal Yavin theorem. But this is basically an excuse for me to try to sell you uh, to sell you uh, the idea of using bornological vector spaces whenever possible. Basically, I'm going to say this is a simpler, easier more correct thing to do. Uh, now, again, again, this is a replacement for the notion of topological vector spaces. If you have not found yourself needing to use those, then maybe bornological vector spaces won't be for you either. Um, okay, so maybe let me, let me begin. So there are lots of examples for um, topological vector spaces or, spa topological or, or vector spaces that carry a topology and they appear in uh, representation theory. So for example, there are spaces like L2 of X, the space of L2 functions, there are L1 functions, L17 functions, and, but also there are spaces of smooth functions like uh, C8 of X, the functions that are continuously differentiable eight times, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, lots of these spaces. All of these spaces are what are called Banach spaces. They have a norm, and this norm is basically the only thing we care about. It's the only extra structure that they carry, except for being topological vector spaces. And they are complete with respect to this norm. However, not all 
interesting uh, representation of Banach spaces. For example, it's very natural to try to work with the space of smooth functions over X, or maybe the space of Schwarz functions over X. Uh, these spaces uh, don't really have just one norm. They have an infinitude of norms. So you can take the norm of the function, you can take the norm of the derivative, you can take the norm of the second derivative, and all of these norms are important if you want to take a look at um, smooth functions. Now, these spaces uh, uh, still have some common properties. They are called fresh uh, They have, uh, it turns out that they have a countable system of norms that defines their behavior. So these are called fresh spaces. They are spaces that don't have just one norm. They have a countable amount of norms. However, there are spaces that are not even fresh So a very natural example is the space of compactly supported smooth functions on X where X is not necessarily compact. So uh, basically this is something, this is called a, and sometimes called an LF space if I ask Wikipedia, uh, but it's not fresh and it's not Banach. Uh, just maybe to give you an example for how these constructions work, you can start out with the Banach spaces and then spaces like fresh spaces like C, C infinity and S of X are countable inverse limits. So for example, uh, C infinity of X is the inverse limit over all N of CN of X, just as topological vector spaces. And similarly, there's a, a, a countable system of norms that turns uh, Schwarz functions into an inverse limit. However, spaces like CS uh, of, of like smooth compactly supported functions they, they don't have this form. Uh, specifically, in order to construct smooth compactly supported functions, you take a direct limit over all compact subsets of those smooth functions that are supported inside the compact set. So you have a direct limit of an inverse limit of Banach spaces. And that's pretty awful. Like, suppose that you were trying to do some construction, yes? So you start with uh, Banach spaces, you take inverse limits of Banach spaces, you take direct limits of inverse limits of Banach spaces, and then maybe you want to tensor two of these things together or consider the space of maps or something, and very quickly you get into this, uh, very bad constructions. Now you could say, okay, just Gal, why don't you just say something about the category they live in, the topological vector spaces. So of course, we don't have to consider all kinds of constructions because you have an ambient category. That's what it's for. So that you can say, instead of saying something about inverse limit of Banach spaces and direct limits of inverse limits of Banach spaces, etc., you can just say something about all topological vector spaces. The problem is that this is an, just doesn't work. You cannot really say anything that's useful about this a category that's this large. Uh, it, or basically, not maybe not that it is too large. It is just not the right category. In this talk, we are going to be describing a different category called bornological vector spaces. Bornologic, uh, bornological vector spaces. And this category is going to include all of the examples that we care about, all of the fresh spaces, all of the Banach spaces, all of the LF spaces, they're all going to be here. But with the key difference is being that this ambient category is actually meaningful. That we can say interesting things about bornological vector spaces in general. They are, have excellent closure properties. If you have to bond, they, they, they have good properties with respect to tensor products, inner, inner homes, they have all of the closure properties that you would want whereas the topological vector spaces really don't. Um, so, so, so one way that this comes about is, for example, that often when you do representation theory, you try to say, I have a theory, uh, I have to take some theorem about, say, Frechet spaces. But then you also need the case of smooth compact functions. So you need to maybe generalize the theorem or say something like, yes, the same proof works or something like that. And really it's not clear where your theorems actually apply. And my, 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 the, the thing is that in many cases, where they apply is actually here. Bornological vector spaces is where all of the theorems are true and all of the, wrong, all of the correct 
things are true if the incorrect theory or not. Um, so let's maybe begin. Uh, let, let's begin. Um, so, as, as, uh, so, 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 so uh, the main example that we are going to be working with is the Dixmir Malyavin theorem. Uh, now, this is go just as I said, this is an excuse rather than so, but, but let's say what is anyway. Um, suppose that you have a, a, a topological vector space V, which is uh, smooth. G model, where G is some Lie group. Then the theorem is that. Uh, sorry, uh, Carl, can, yes. uh, by smooth, uh, so there are at least two different definitions of smooth that I can think of here. So do, do you mean that, uh, uh, for any vector, there is a seminorm such that all of its derivatives are controlled by, are uh, uh, bounded in the seminorm, or are you using some weaker notion? So I'm, I'm not using a weaker notion, but I, what you said is, is, the, is, is, is what's going to prove you. In fact, we are going to define. We're not actually going to be staying with this version of the theorem. We're going to be reformulating it for bonological vector spaces. And then I will give an exact formal definition for what I mean by smooth. So for now, yes, think of it the same way you, as you thought of it now, as there's some seminome that bound, uh, 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 sorry, so, so, it, sorry, it's, it's not, it's not that there's a single seminome. You need to have, uh, like, um, for every seminome, you, have, you need to have some boundedness. Uh, let's, 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 not, let's not get into the exact definition. The fact that this definition is pretty ugly is, in fact, one of the problems with phonological vectors. For, for now, just let's, uh, I, 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 the definition because I'm going to have an entire part of the lecture where I explicitly define what being smooth means. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, for a moment, there is uh, uh, what this smooth. So, so just keep, keep in mind, smooth here means something about. Uh, each of the seminome having uh, each of the seminomes remaining some bounded in some manner after we take derivatives. Uh, we'll discuss well for more formally say what this means later. Um, so, but you have a smooth Frechet G model, and the claim is that for every vector v inside the vector space, there exists some finite uh, collect set of functions f1 through fn that are compactly supported functions on G and some finite collection of vectors V1 to Vn inside my representation such that little v is equal to the sum of Fi convolution with Vi. Basically what this means is that you take um, is that essentially uh, so 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 if you have smooth compact supported so compactly supported functions on a link group then you can take their convolution with any vector in a smooth uh, G module and what this means is essentially that say, because convolution uh, is something that smoothens things out what this means is that every vector in V is at least as smooth as a function on G as a smooth function on G. This is a very useful technical result. It lets you to it lets you prove some things about um, about, about smooth representations very generally because they allow you to, to express the, their smoothness in a very explicit way as a convolution. Um, and well, so so this this is a classical Dixmir Malyavin theorem. It's been known a really long time. And well, first of all, let me say a few things about why this theorem is a bit unsatisfactory. So, for example, uh, let's say that I have the space of smooth compactly supported functions of G. This space is not Frechet, but the theorem is still true for it. That is, if I have a smooth compactly supported function, then I can always express it as a finite combination of convolutions of functions. 
And, and this, already this is a very big problem because this space actually appears inside the theorem. Yes, it's not strictly applied to one of the spaces appearing inside it. Uh, furthermore, there are also... Galic, Galic, excuse me, so far you wrote that V is a topological vector space. Did you want yeah. to write that it's fresh air? A smooth fresh air G module. A smooth fresh air G module, right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you did write fresh air. Yes. So, 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 so C, CSFG is not, CCF, the compactly supported smooth functions are not fresh air, so they don't really satisfy this theorem. Another example is that there, there are also other generalizations that I really want to be able to describe. Um, for example, if G is panic, so uh, let me scroll down. So for G panic, then the same statement actually holds. Yes, if I have a smooth G module, I apologize for the atrocious handwriting. I, I, I blame them the fact that I'm using a mouse. So if V is a smooth G module for a PID group, then for every V and V, then there's actually a function F, which is smooth with compact support on G. This is actually usually denoted S of G, such that V is equal to F convolution V. So this property of being a convolution also holds, holds in the PR case. Um, now, in any case, in this, in, this, in, in this talk, I'm going to be discussing a generalization, which applies to- The same V? Yes, it's the same V. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be, but you can choose it to be the same. Just pick F, which is the indicator function of a small neighborhood affinity, and, that's, and then it holds. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, you're right. So, in this, I'm going, in this, in this talk, I'm going to be discussing a, uh, generalization no uh, so 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 what is the claim so the, the main claim that i'm going to make or the main theorem that i'm not going to prove i'm just going to be able to state to to explain the definitions this is the purpose of this talk to explain the definitions is that if v is a uh, smooth complete Bornological vector space, then, uh, the, 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 then, in, then the following holds. So I'm just going to write down the formula and then I will explain some of what the symbols mean, although the rest of this lecture is going to be actually explaining what the symbols mean. So first of all, so, so, so then the map Written down is an isomorphism. Uh, it's an isomorphism of bornological G models. So let me explain what I wrote here. So uh, n n if V is, a v is a bornological vector space, smooth functions with compact support are also a bornological vector space. Now, there is a notion of tensor product of bornological vector spaces. Um, some people have, there's also a notion of tensor product of topological vector spaces. But usually when people think about this tensor product, then they, what they actually mean is the completion of the tensor product. They put a little hat, you can put a little hat here to emphasize 
if you want to complete the tensor product. But I am not doing this. I am saying that you just take the tensor product of vector spaces, just of usual vector spaces, of smooth functions with V. This does have the structure of a bornological module, but for the moment you don't have to think about it this way. Just even think about it just as a vector space, plain algebraic vector space with no topological structure whatsoever. Then you have a tensor product of vector spaces of smooth functions with P, and you take the relative tensor product over smooth functions. This means that you take the quotient so that you say that F tensor G convolution with V is equivalent to F convolution G tensor with V. Because V has an action of smooth functions, you can take this relative tensor product and you just take this quotient. This is again, just an algebraic property, algebraic quotient of an algebra of, 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 uh, of, uh, of a pure uh, abstract vector space. And the claim is that, of the theorem is that this map, the, this natural map from smooth functions times vector space to vector space, which is given by convolution, is an isomorphism. Um, first of all, why does this recover the previous theorem? So note that just the fact that this is surjective says that every vector in V can be obtained as a finite sum, a finite sum, because this is the algebraic tensor product of convolutions. And in fact, it tells you also in what sense this expression is unique. And it says a few other things as well. It says that this collection of finite sums of tensor products that I defined here on the left-hand side, uh, it has a natural bornology, and this natural, natural bornology is actually complete because it's isomorphic to V. So, so there's no, I, I could have written completion over here, but I don't have to. This space is already complete. Um, and this is the main result that we are going to talk about. Uh, so, so before I proceed to explaining what the terms here are, what is a bornological vector space, what it means to be smooth, uh, are there any questions? Gal? Yes. Could you please emphasize what would fail <clears throat> if we had just a, a, a topological vector space? Just emphasize the failure of the various facts that are. So, 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 so it, 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 uh, 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 I, 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 it's, it's very easy to construct very pathological vector spaces. I have not really tried to, to construct a, a given one because all actual vector spaces that you actually encounter in actual practice, they all satisfy this theorem, yes? Because they're all actually bornological and not topological vector spaces. So there is no natural example that fails to satisfy this theorem because all of the natural examples are actually bornological. Uh, it's just to being topological vectors, a topological vector space allows for very pathological examples. Uh, I can give a natural example in which, well, you can say that uh, just the formal definition of smooth vector is not good, but uh, you can consider distributions. Mm -hmm. ah, uh, yes. now, depending on definition, but you might think that all distributions are smooth because you can derive them. Every That's the reason why I derive. said there are at least at least two distinct notions of smooth vector, because this is the wrong notion. Right, this is the wrong notion, exactly. But if you take the wrong notion for distributions, because you can always derive it, then the distribution actually is in the image of convolution only when it is a smooth function, which probably would be the right notion. Yes. Okay, you're correct. Uh, so, so distributions are, not, are very much not smooth according to the definition that we are going to be using. Um, for, for, for a layman to understand, just uh, uh, to understand Dima, V is equal to S upper star of G, and uh, it cannot be thought of, as you say, as a smooth for share representation, because if you think about it like that, you, you, you do not get an onto map. That, that's what you're saying? Yes. yes. Uh, you, 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 uh, elements of the, of, of, uh, the temporal distributions, temporal distributions are never a convolution with a smooth function. If you convolve them with smooth functions, you actually end up with the original distribution. In fact, the thing that is true is that there is a notion of, um, of smoothening. It turns out that if you, have a, 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 if you have a G module that's sufficiently nice, 
you can consider its um, you can consider its smoothening. In, when you take it's the same effect that happens when you take um, functions in the Piadi case. You have a representation of, of or made of say smooth compactly supported functions, and when you take the dual space, and it's huge. There are many many distributions. But what you usually care about is the contragradient space, which is the smoothening of the dual space. And, and, and when you take the smoothening of the distributions, then it actually does exactly what you expect. It's effectively tensoring them out like this, taking the, this operation on the vector space. This is exactly what smoothening does. And that will make them into just smooth functions. So smooth, in fact, we will turn them into, so the smoothening of the temporal distributions is uh, smooth functions. It's a smooth functions of what is called uniformly moderate growth. And this actually have a role in, say, automorphic representation theory. They're actually are actually important, and that's the, the and that's the um, that's the control gradient of functions on G. Okay, so what we're going to be discussing so so here's the structure of the lecture. If you have the cheat sheet, then you already know this. But what we're going to be doing is that I'm going to maybe saying a few to say a few words about this strange construction that we had in the theory that this this functor tensor with A over A, because you don't really see it most of the time. And afterwards, I'm going to be saying what a bornological vector space is, what's the tensor product of two bornological vector spaces. And finally, I will be defining what being smooth means in this context. And that's it. That's our plan for today. This will be our goal. We're not any more ambitious than that. Um, so first of all, let me maybe say a few words about this functor about tensoring with A over A. So let A be a uh, algebra uh, over C. Uh, now, if A is unital, then this functor is just the identity functor. Yes, if you have a unital algebra, then A tensor over A with any A module is canonically isomorphic to M. And that's very interesting. So in this talk, we're going to be only considering non-unital algebras. Uh, but we will want a weaker property. It turns out that it's very, a lot of objects in representation theory are non-unital. Non For example, um, smooth functions or smooth compactly supported functions on G is a ring. It's a commutative, it's a non-commutative ring, uh, but it's not unital. There's no, the delta distribution is not here. Uh, however, it has a much, uh, very closely related property. And this property is what, uh, and, and I'm going to call this property uh, being quasi-unital. So uh, this is, so, so, so definition. <coughs> if you have an algebra, a non-unital algebra A, Then we say that it is quasi-unital if A tensor over A with A, this has a natural multiplication map into A, if this is an isomorphism. And this is one part of the definition. The second part of the definition is that if A is quasi-unital and M is some A module, then we say that it is smooth If the natural map A tends over A with M to M 
is an ison, is an isomorphism. Um, so notice this is that this is a completely algebraic definition. Yes, I, I said nothing about topologies, nothing at all. This is so. So let me give maybe a few examples of things that satisfy these properties that of, of smooth algebras and smooth models. So let me maybe leave it here. Can you still see it? Okay. So let's see, let me give some examples for. Uh, smooth algebras. So the easiest example is that is, is unital algebras. So all unital algebras are quasi-unital. That's very easy to show. And all of their unital modules are also smooth. However, they don't have to be unital. For example, even having a one-sided unit, just a left unit or a right unit, is enough to be quasi-unital. Again, it's not very hard to show. But there are also rings that are not unital, but quasi-unital. For example, uh, let A be the space of, uh, I'm going to say, formal sums of parts of T that are greater than zero. So an element of A is going to be some sum of A, uh, some finite sum from zero to N, AI t to the ri, where AI is complex and ri is greater than zero and in r. So these finite expressions with powers of t, they form a non-unital algebra. And my claim is that this algebra is quasi-unital. Uh, how to show this, you just take, if you have some function f, some, so, some, some formal expression f in A, some power sum, power series in A, or not power series, just some polynomial in A, then you can always uh, express it as t to the power of epsilon times some f prime. And this very easily allows you to show that uh, this A is smooth. Um, yes. Is it true that in the definition of a smooth model, it's actually well in the definition of a with a quasi unit algebra and of a smooth model? Is it is it true that actually it's enough to have an epimorphism? No, it is not true. It's very it's a very intuitive notion, but uh, you're building up right from to my next example. This is an excellent question. So consider, for example, so let me give you some examples for smooth and non-smooth models for this algebra, just so that we have a good notion in our heads. So an example for a smooth model, uh, you can take um, combinations of powers of t that are greater than one. Yes, this is obviously a model for A. And again, it's very easy to show that this is smooth. From every object, ele object, object from every element, you can extract some power of t. Um, an example for a non-smooth model where the map is not, is not surjective, just consider um, powers that are greater than or equal to zero, to one. Then in this case, the, the element t cannot be expressed as a convolution. It is uh, too rough. However, you can also find examples that go the other way around. Uh, so you can write powers of t that are greater than one but smaller than or equal to two. And this is also smooth, but- How is it even the model? Wait. Uh, just just take, you take the quotient. This is the quotient of, okay. of, of, of powers that are greater than one. You basically take powers that are greater than one, modulo powers that are greater than two. It's a quotient of two modules. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, however, if you take powers that are greater than one, but strictly smaller than two, then this space is not smooth. So, for example, why is it not smooth? If you take t tensor t and map it 
and see where it, where it maps, what's the convolution of T with T, then in this model you get zero. Uh, this is not zero here on the left-hand side. Here, here. It's zero here. It's only zero on the left-hand side. So here is an example for where you have a surjective map, which is not injective. Basically, what happened here is that I took a um, is, is that is that I took a, a, a smooth module and I took its quotient by something that wasn't smooth. So the result is not smooth either. And so this is one class of example. This is a good example to keep in mind. Uh, this power series, uh, this or not necessarily power series. But of course, the main example that we are actually interested in is, uh, well, ah, sorry, is smooth, compactly supported functions on G. In fact, there are some more examples here. There's also, for instance, um, uh, uh, Schwartz functions on G. This is also quasi unitum in fact, this is just a consequence of the main theorem that we are going to discuss, of the variant of Dixmir Malyavin that, that I'm not going to prove to you in this uh, talk, but I'm going to talk about a lot. Uh, in fact, uh, these examples are, 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 in fact, one can reformulate the Dixmir Malyavin theorem in a more categorical language as a categorical equivalence. The claim is that you can take the two categories, one of smooth, complete bornological G modules and the category of smooth complete bornological This infinity of G modules and these two categories are equivalent. Now, the interesting thing to say about this equivalence is that the word smooth here and the word smooth here mean completely different things. Yes? If they look very similar. Superficially, these two definitions, these two categories are very, very similar. But the word smooth here up top is some analytic property. Yes, it's something about derivatives being bounded in some sense that we will discuss in a moment. But the smooth down here is a, an, an, an algebraic property. It's in the sense of uh, being smooth as a quasi, as a model for a quasi unital algebra, as, as, a, as I um, just defined. So there's an equivalence of categories between smooth complete bornological G modules in the analytic sense and smooth complete bornological G uh, C infinity with compact port modules in the algebraic sense. Wait, and so is it purely algebraic? So uh, when, you, when you're talking about smooth bornological modules over this bornological algebra, but, are you requiring but, but, this? <laughs> it's isomorphism to be a bornological isomorphism, or yes, I require the isomorphism to be a bornological isomorphism. Okay, so it's not. So it's not. It's not a purely algebraic notion, actually. It's not a purely algebraic notion, but it is very, very close. Much yes. closer than yes. some. Yes, of course. Yes, no, you're absolutely correct. Your comment is in place. Um, so, 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 and, and and this equivalence of categories is in fact the the the, the deep part of the Xmir Maliavin that you can replace thinking about. G modules, things with an action of G, with things that can be convol convolved with smooth functions. And this equivalence of categories is absolutely not close to true for topological vector spaces, but it just holds as is for bornological vector spaces. Um, okay, so I think I've done enough teasing at this point that I can get the point of this talk and tell you what, a born, what, the, what mis the mysterious bornological vector spaces actually are. Um, oh, sorry, yes. So, what is a bornological vector space? Let's give a definition. So, 
what is a bonological vector space? So, 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 so um, first of all, okay. So what is a bonology? Let's start with it. So if I have a space X, the analogy is some, so that's definition. B is a bonology on X. This means that this is, I think of this as a family of bounded subsets. So that means that if A is bounded and B is inside A, then B is bounded. And this means that if I have some finite collection of bounded subsets, um, like this, then the union is also bounded. And I want the singletons to be bounded. So any little x is a bounded, it is a bounded subset. This is called a bornology. Just like for topology, you, you're interested in open sets, which tells you some localized, small scale structure of your space about convergence, then bornological vector spaces are all about being bounded. Um, so, 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 this is what it means to be a, to, 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 to have a, to, to, to be a bornological space between two bornological spaces. A map is called, it can also be called bounded if it sends if it sends bounded, bounded sets to bounded sets. It bounded maps to bounded. And this is, this, this is the, the so, so this, this is, this is a category. Um, now, as I just described it for, for general spaces, this is very, very different from a topology. Yes. A topology is, a, is something that's very small scale and the bornology is something that's very large scale. However, so, 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 so in general, this is a very different notion from being topolo from a topology. But it turns out that for vector spaces specifically, these two notions are much more closely related. Um, so first of all, I, I actually want to say what I mean by a bornological vector space. So what do I mean when I say a bornological vector space? Then I mean that there is, that, 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 that basically what, if you have a, so let's say that, uh, uh, so, 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 so what, what I want is that there, that there are some basic requirements that I want to have. Yes, I want, this is, uh, but, 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 but the, the, the um, uh, but basically the only thing that I really want is the following, that let's say that V is a bornological vector space. If V is bornological, uh, what do I want to write? If V is bonological, and every uh, bounded subset for every bounded subset, every blah, for every bounded subset. The um, absolute convex hull, which was given the, the, the absolute convex hull of A, give, which is just combinations of A with coefficients that have absolute values that sum to one, is also bounded. This is more rigorously, formally, this is actually called a um, convex vector bornology but since 
I'm, this is the only case that I'm going to take. This is the, these are the words that I'm going to use. I'm just going to call this a homological vector space. So before we proceed, let's just make a few sanity checks. Um, so for example, uh, let, let's make some examples. Gal, excuse me, could you please write something on the blackboard as to what a bar is? Just for us to remember, because otherwise it looks like closure, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, so let me write this down. Uh, so, uh, So a closure, so the convex hull, the absolute convex hull is the collection of V of the form V is equal to some lambda I A I with uh, lambda I being complex, some disbalanced convex hull, I think that's the term. Some, uh, the sum of them is less than or equal to one, is uh, less, okay, equal to one, uh, less than or equal to one doesn't really matter. Uh, and that AI all in A. Actually, you probably do need to to have some uh, sums bounded not just by one but by by finite constant because otherwise you have no way of scaling the vectors. Uh, sorry. So so so. Um, how do you how do you ensure your Bernoulli is invariant and the multiplication by two? So 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 that's that, that, that's uh, what the uh, just a moment. Um, Ah, so, 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 uh, or, 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 yeah, 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 right, 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 you probably just need, yeah, yes, you 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 could, right. you could, you could start by saying that it's a, it's a, it's a module over the Bernoulli ring of complex numbers, right. but, 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 but I, I don't, internal uh, in the category of Bernoulli yeah, yeah, sets, yes, 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 you're, you're, and you're right, this condition. you're right, I probably just, really, really, all I really need is, is that two, this, twice this thing is bound, that's all I really actually need. But just, just, just let's, let's, so, so, so just, just show some examples. So uh, I claim that uh, um, the sum of 200 sets is, the, just is, is, is also bounded, for example, is bounded. Um, and that's just because, well, you can take the union of A and B and then you can say uh, that, a, that, that a plus b is contained inside twice the, uh, the balanced convex hull of a and b. So it's, so, 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 so a plus b is bounded, so addition is, is a bounded operation, and so is multiplication by any bounded set of scalars uh, because of this. So, so just for any um, set B inside C bounded, then B times V for any specific vect vector is also bounded. So this is the, def the basic definition. And let me maybe relate it to, uh, to, to, a, to, to more familiar terms, to, to, to topological vector spaces. So uh, just any questions before I maybe proceed to that? OK. So, so let's. Let, 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 let's recall some definitions. We have top, that this not the category of topological vector spaces. And we have born, let this be the category of bornological vector spaces. And we have S norm, that's going to be the category of semi-normed 
uh, vector spaces. Um, basically, then, then, then as it turns out, you can that you, you can think of, uh, of uh, so, uh, so just like a, 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 a topological space can be described by giving a generating family of open sets or basis for the topology, uh, so can bornological vector spaces. They can be described uh, via a generating family of uh, bounded sets. So what, 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 what does this mean? So let's take, so, 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 so we say that uh, uh, some family uh, Ti, some directed family Ti for I and I is uh, a generating family of bounded subsets if every uh, bounded set is contained in, in, in some Ti maybe times a scalar. So in this case, this family of Ti is a generating collection bounded sets. It's very easy to show that every bornological vector space is a gen has a generating collection of bounded sets. Just take uh, all bounded all sets. Them. Yes, uh, but 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 usually it's a very, it's much easier to describe things this way to think of them. Uh, so for example. Uh, for a convex, because, because, because we're talking about convex vector bornologies, then um, you can always take uh, all of the TIs to be absolutely convex. Now, maybe you should probably recall something from the theory of topological vector spaces, which is that if you have an absolutely convex uh, subset of a vector space, then you can define a semi-norm on its span. So if T is convex, so for uh, T convex, absolutely convex, we define Vt to be the span of T. And this vector space has a semi-norm that I'm going to call absolute value with respect to T, such that basically it tells you how much you have to scale V or, or how much to scale T such that uh, v is in lambda t. That's the smallest scalar you can find that sends v into t. Um, so the convexity of t implies that this satisfies the triangle inequality. So it's a seminal. And so one way to think about a bornological vector space is to say that it is given by this increasing family of seminomes. So we have this, this, this seminomed vector spaces, Got it. VTI, yes. What do you call ab uh, absolutely convex? Uh, that's, that's uh, ah, absolutely convex means that uh, T is, is equal to its absolute convex whole. And what's, I mean, what's the difference between this and uh, convex? Uh, just, just it's, 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 it's a thing that people have when they use complex numbers as the coefficients. So they don't want you to take, uh, so, so, so like they don't want to take only real combinations, but also complex combinations. Okay. It's a very stupid, it's a, it's a very stupid uh, generalization. Uh, anyway, so uh, in, one way to think about the bornological vector space is to imagine that you have these subspaces, VTI, inside V, this increasing family of subspaces, such that on the one hand, they cover V, 
And on the other hand, so, so that, that they just cover V. And on the other hand, you, you have this property that um, you essentially have a system of semi null vector spaces where all of the maps are bounded maps or continuous maps, it's the same thing. So a map of semi normed vector spaces is a bounded map if and only if it's continuous, it's the same definition. So, 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 so they're basically, they're basically like int normed spaces. Yes, yes. So, so all of the locally, locally convex topological vector spaces are basically pro-normed spaces and your spaces are int normed. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. This is what okay. I'm, the next thing I'm going to say that there's a, it turns out that there's a fully faithful embedding of categories of bomb inside the hidden category of semi known vector spaces given by sending each bonological vector space to its uh, system of generating uh, semi nodes semi nodes the same way that there is a, a fully faithful embedding of topological vector spaces inside pro, pro semi nodes vector spaces. The reason that this is, is not an equivalence of category, this is, this is strictly different, is essentially because BORN is the category, is the, is the, is the full subcategory of uh, in the semi norms, such that the maps are all injective. Yes, the, the, linear, the, the, the in system needs to be strictly increasing or strictly non-decreasing. And for top, topological vector spaces are also given by maps of, of families of continuous maps of semi norms but there we want all of them all, we want all of the maps to be isomorphisms on the underlying vector spaces so you also have these inverse systems but they also all have need to have the same underlying vector space but that's essentially the only difference in fact you should note that there's also an adjunction between in the whatever to pro whatever. Yes, you send any whatever to whatever, and then an inverse system, you can take it to its inverse limit in the other category, and the direct system, you can take it to a direct limit in the other category. So basically, any bonological vector space, you can think of it as the co-limit of this generating family of semi norms, and you can take this co-limit as a vector space to obtain a topological vector space and also the other way around. One way to make this explicit is that if I have, uh, if, 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 if I have a, a logical vector space, then I can assign it what is called the bornivorous topology. Bornivorous topology. That's the topology that eats bounded sets. So basically, a set U is open. Let me scroll down a bit. So a set U is open if and only if uh, for every bounded A, there is some scalar lambda greater than zero, such that lambda A is inside U. So U is bornivorous if it can eat any uh, bounded set. And it turns out that this is a topology. And uh, on the other way around, you can define a, what is called, if you have a topological, so, so this is for V, which is bornological, you also can define for V, which is topological, you can define the, uh, what's called the von Neumann bornology. Where a set is bounded, A, is bounded if and only if uh, for every semi norm uh, 
on V. Okay. Is bounded. So it's bounded according to every seminal. And this gives you the von Neumann, von Neumann bornology. Uh, so, so you have this. Uh, so this is one joint, this is the other joint, and this are, and, and these two are, are adjoint functors. And you, it, it turns out that there's a large class of spaces on which this adjoint pair is actually an equivalence. So for example, oh, what did I do? So for example, if you restrict the adjunction, so you have this adjunction born left adjoint, right adjoint to top. And if you restrict this adjunction to Frechet vector spaces, then it is fully faithful. Essentially, what this means is that if you take uh, the natural map between uh, the bornivorous topology of the von Neumann, von Neumann bornology of a Frechet vector space, then this is canonically isomorphic to the original vector space. Just, it just recovers the original topology. And this characterizes, in fact, not only Frechet vector spaces, this characterizes metrizable vector spaces. And essentially, this fact that the nice uh, subclass of Frechet spaces is fully faithfully embedded in both categories is the reason for the confusion. Yes, that's why people think they need bornological vectors, uh, topological vector spaces when they actually want to talk about bornologies. Because what they, they're trying to generalize this subcategory and they mistakenly go here instead of here. Um, so let me, uh, so, 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 do so, you, do, sorry, hmm? so, do you have a, uh, do you have a, uh, a characterization of, uh, let's say for share spaces as bornological spaces <laughs> intrinsically? Because Frechet uh, spaces are kind of pro projective limits, right? They're, how do you characterize them inductively? So, 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 so yes, there's, so, there's some property about, um, uh, 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 I, think, I think that as in systems, they are characterized by the fact that uh, the in systems are, uh, what's the term? Um, Please remind you of the term that when you have when you have a kappa compact object in a category, then it it is ah yes they are uh, countably filtered, uh, or, or there, there's some filtration property as that things are countably filtered as uh, as, as in vector spaces or something like that. I'm, I'm I'm not exactly certain on this point, but in any case, you don't really need to have an internal characterization because. Theorems are just true for all biological vector spaces. Yes, you don't have. To yeah, I understand. I was, I was just curious if you if you know. Okay. So, so yeah, so, so I think I think there's some some uh, some some filteredness condition on mm -hmm. on on the colimit that defines them, that, that mm -hmm. characterizes uh, the metrizable the image of the metrizable uh, spaces. Um, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Don't take my word my word for it. Um, so. This is this is this is this is a very this, this was a very brief introduction to bornological vector spaces. Let me maybe give you tell you exactly what I'm going to do in the remaining time that I have, maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes that I have left. So one thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to discuss in, in terms of products for bornological vector spaces. That's going to be very easy and quick. And after that, I'm going to say what I promised about smooth representations. Um, so for now, let's begin by discussing tensor products. So I'll start by saying that for topological vector spaces, there are several competing definitions for what, uh, for what should be the topological, for, for what should be the, the tensor products of, 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 of two topological vector spaces. There are what are called projective 
products and injective products and there's some spectrum in between of, of, of potential tensor products that you can define. That's pretty awful. And the reason that people have to do this pretty awful thing is the following. Tensor products are things that play well with collimates. Yes, this is what we want tensor products to be. We want to have some maybe uh, universal properties and things like A tensor B going to C. This should be bilinear maps or just things that... So, 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 so tensor products are very well behaved with respect to collimates. Yes, there, there are things, there should be arrows coming out of tensor products. However, topological vector spaces, as I just mentioned, are actually pro-systems. They are pro-category. In particular, they, ha they have well-behaved limits, but very poorly behaved collimates. And that really, really complicates trying to work with the products there. It doesn't actually really work. However, for bonological vector spaces, this is actually much easier. So, so let me just define what I mean by a tensor product of bonological vector spaces. This is basically closest to the projective tensor product. But again, things are much nicer because it commutes with collimates. So well, several well, well, well the, the, the problem with the projective and the injective is that the projective is not self-dual. I, I cannot hear what you're saying. You're, uh, can you? Um, I'm saying that the project, the, if, you, if you want your tensor product to be well behaved with respect to the collimates, then you want the projective one. But yes, the, fact yes, of, yes. the fact of life is that it's not self-dual. Yes. So there is so there's a dual notion of injective one, which is which is which is actually a kind of internal home. So something like that, it's, right? It's, yes. So so it's so, a problem so, so even for Banach spaces, it's already this way. So 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 so, so let, let me just say what I want to say, and then mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm... No 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 no. This was a good inter a good inter that, that, that's that's good. Yes. So so, so I, I like your comments. Uh, so they, they they help me push things along. So basically, what I want to have is that. As I said, if I can think of intuitively, I want to think of, of bonological vector spaces as co-limits of, 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 of uh, seminorm spaces. So really what I want to say is that just, you know, that I, I want this to be true. This is the co-limit of i and j of vi tensor vj. And here I, I, I want to take the projective product. This is the projective product of semi known vector spaces. But this is a nasty definition. This is maybe not a good definition. The, the definition, or this is the definition, but it's formulated in a way that it may be unclear to people. So let me just give a good, a well formulated definition. Um, so, definition if, you, if I have V and V prime inside Born, then V times V prime is the same. Is 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 uh, is, uh, is, is, is just considered that this is, is the usual vector space, but with the Bornology, is the just the product with Bornology given as follows, with Bornology the Bornology generated by. Uh, all products T tensor T prime where T is bounded in V and T prime is bounded in V prime. So just basically a, a set is bounded if it can be covered by a bounded set of V and the bound times a bounded set of V prime. By, and by the convex hull of such thing. Yes, but the convex hull of such thing, yes. So, so, so for normed spaces, it will be just the algebraic tensor product with the projective tensor norm. Yes. And then you just take the collimate. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. So, 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 so just what this means intuitively is that uh, a, a map, a bilinear map between V tensor V prime to V double prime is, is, is just, is just a bilinear map, which is bounded, which takes bounded sets to 
bounded sets. This is what it just means to be to be a bilinear map. Um, so 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 one consequence of this is that actually so so now here is one very pleasant property of this tensor product of bonological vector spaces, which is that it is by almost by definition it is left adjoint. Yes, uh, it's uh, so it has a right adjoint. So we have a notion of inner homes. of a Hino home space. These are maps, so, so we can de denote curly home from V to V prime. This is right adjoint to, uh, to tensor products. And it can be explicitly described as um, uniformly bounded uh, as, 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 as linear maps that are uniformly bounded on bounded sets. Uh, equibounded, I think it's called the equibounded bonology. And this is absolutely not true for topological vector spaces. For topological vector spaces, you can't take you cannot take you know homes and tensor products never respect collimates. So not never, but they vary, and it's a unusual unusual for them to do so. Um, so essentially, this is so 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 the the only final statement I wanted to say is that uh, the one final remark is that. So, uh, okay, so, so just that the, this adjunction that I described earlier for the logical vector spaces to topological vector spaces uh, respects the tensor product, the, the projective the tensor product. So it sends tensor products of bonological vector spaces to projective tensor products in top. Wait, but for the topological ones, you don't you don't want to kind of complete it in some way, right? Uh, I, I, uh, mm, sorry. So the 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 projector. So on the category of topological vector spaces, you don't mean a completed tensor. Product. No, no, I don't mean the the complete the completion. Not complete, of course not. Mm -hmm. So just just the algebraic one, but with the tensor with the projected tensor product topology. Yes. Um. Okay. Oh, what's this? Ah, sorry. I keep picking up symbols. Um, so this is what I want to say about tensor products. Any question because before I say what I mean by smoothness? So I'm not really hearing any questions. So I'm going to just say what I mean by a smooth representation. And that will be the last thing I will say uh, in this talk. Um, so essentially, what I'm going to so so, so let's 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 build it, just let's build the definition together. It's not very hard. Um, so what we're going to do is that is the following. Suppose we have a bonological vector space V, and we have an action of G. So what I want to do is that I want to say what are the smooth vectors, or say the smooth functions. of V. As it turns out, some functor that I can apply, which is called the Garding functor, denoted like this. It's, it gives you some and subset. Hmm? What was G again here? Is it a Lie group or what Lee, is it? Lee, for, for now let's say Lie group. You can do this for every, uh, I think, locally compact group or something like that. It's true. You can define this in a very high generality, but for the moment, let's say Lie group. 
Topologi topological so, grouping. Hmm? Topological group anyway. Yeah? And fun, smooth. I want to say talk about smooth functions. Um, so, so I'm going to define a functor, which is the Gerding functor, which is going to be equipped with a natural embedding into B, embedding of vector spaces, of monological vector spaces. And what we're going to say is that we're going to say that V is smooth. This is the Gerding. It has like a circle over the A. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Gording, I think. Gording? I think the pronunciation is Gording, but I'm, I may be mistaken. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you for educating me. I've only ever seen it written down and never spoken, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I have read a, a, a transliteration into Cyrillic and it has, it has, it has O there. <laughs> so, ah. Okay, that, that's a good hint. <laughs> so, 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 so we say that, uh, we were going to say that V is smooth. If this step between the smooth vectors of V into V is an isomorphism. This should remind you of the definition of a smooth vector space that we had, uh, where we had over a quasi unital algebra, we wanted to say that it is smooth if this smoothening of V into V was an item. So, so, so basically, it's, it's a, this is the uh, analytic version of smoothening. So how do we, def so, so basically, I want to talk about smooth representations, but really all I, mean, all I need to define is this Gerding functor, the functor of, um, of, 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 uh, of smooth vectors. Now, um, as you can probably imagine, I don't have to define this functor on all bonological vector spaces. I can use int completion. Essentially, it is enough to define um, the infinity as a functor from semi vector spaces to bonological vector spaces. And then I can just say that uh, if V is a colimit, is generated by some collection of semi then I can say that the Gerding, the Gerding, sorry, space of V is the colimit of the Gerding spaces. Now, how do I define the Gording space of, uh, of, 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 of a semi normed vector space? Well, that's essentially just probably what, this is probably what you can imagine. Uh, I'm going to say that, um, so first of all, uh, if V, so now let's V be a semi -norm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Gal, Gal. Yes. Can, can you, so, when you're saying that it's enough to define for semi-normed, yes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm convinced because, for example, the space of compactly supported functions on G mm -hmm. is not a colimit of semi-normed representations of G. Like every every semi-normed subspace is not closed under the action of G. Uh, so 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 so. So you need some kind of. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. Let, 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 okay, okay. It's a kind of local uh, action of G, right? But, but not. Yeah, yes, not yes. Yeah, yeah. in, in fact, in fact, in fact, the the, the, the correct thing for me, I, 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 you're correct that I'm trying to be a bit misleading here. The, the the correct thing to do is to say that if you have a bonological vector space, then really what you want to say is that the the first thing you want to demand of your action is that it is that it should be bounded. Yes, you want. Uh, you, but you what want does this? 
So, so for bounded subsets of G, like compact subsets of G should stay. Uh, so, the, the, but boundless you mean like local boundless boundless on compact yeah. subsets of G. Yes. Right. So, so just, just so so in fact so 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 so, so let, let me just say what I what I mean, and then we will. It will all be clear, maybe. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. You, you, you keep making the right comments. You don't need to apologize. Um, so basically, what, what I want to say is that what, what I, the, the way to define this, um, so, so the way to do this is as follows. So, so for every, so, so let's say that V is a G module, it's a bonological vector space. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to consider the, so, so I'm going to make the following definition. Um, so, so for every norm G, let's denote formally, let's denote the Gerding with respect to T. Let's say that this is the, 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 the space of vectors V that are bounded with respect to semi norm T such that, um, also, of, um, so, 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 such, such as all of its, all of its, so, so such that for every differential operator d, d times v is defined and also bounded with respect to this same seminal. So, 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 this is some, uh, some, some subspace. Of VT, it's obviously contain. It obviously contains only bounded things, and the 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 next thing that I can say is that. Um, so 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 it's 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 obviously contained in T, and also it carries a bonology, uh, where we say that um, uh, uh, set A in VT infin Gording is bounded if um, D times A is uniformly bounded is it's just a is just bounded in VT. For, for for this specific thing. So this gives VT infinity a bonological the, the structure of a bonological vector space, and we can just define and we can think of this as a generating collection of of of, of uh, bounded subsets. So we can say V infinity is the bonological vector space generated by these bounded subsets. Gal? Yes. Did you say what D is? Uh, D is any, uh, D, 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 well, D, D goes over the elements of the universal enveloping algebra of G. Ah, okay. I missed it. I'm sorry. Differential operator. I said differential operator, but I probably meant to say this. He's not here. Um, so this is called the grouping space. Um, so, so, so it's not immediately clear, but it is still true that the natural map between the Gerding space of the Gerding space, the Gerding space of the Gerding space, is an isomorphism. So, so, so the, the Gerding space is already smooth, and in fact, this defines a localiza a uh, defines a col a colocalization. V maps to V infinity defines a colocalization and the essential image of this functor is what we call smooth representation. Um, sorry, another kind of slightly technical. Uh, 
Sure. So, so, so do, 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 you, do, you, do you require any kind of completeness conditions to make sense of, you know, derivation and... Uh, all ah, yes, 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 yes. So, so this, this, this makes sense only for complete... Uh, I forgot to talk about completion, yes. So it's and, in my lecture notes, but I forgot to say this. And by complete, do you, do you mean that, the, uh, that it, is a, it is a collimate of actual Banach? Yes, so, 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 so I forgot to make this definition and you're absolutely right and this is a very bad oversight on my, on my side, but uh, we say that uh, a bonological space is complete, V in bone is complete. I even had it in the statement of the theorem, but I didn't say the definition is complete if and only if. Um, it can be written down as a colimit of VT, where each VT is complete. And this is the same thing as saying that all bounded, absolutely convex, Subsets define com the define complete uh, Banach spaces. So so all so so if there's one system of generating seminoles which is complete, so then all of them are complete. And this definition. Uh, oh, sorry. only makes sense for bonological vector spaces that are complete. Again, again, you define the functor by defining it first on the uh, seminorm, on, on, on the completion respect to one seminorm and, 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 and continue, or what is it that you're doing? So as was mentioned here, uh, this isn't really actually a functor on, 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 on seminomes because it's not really immediately clear what the action of G, that the action of G descends to each of these bounded subspaces. But basically what I'm doing is that I'm defining, so as you just could think of it as a, as a symbolic, as just, just the definition, yes? I'm saying denote VT infinity for every seminome T as the collection of V and VT such that all of the derivatives of V are defined and lie in the same VT. And then the colimit of all VT in, of, of, of all of those VT infinities is V infinity. Yes, the, just just this is the definition. So basically, for an for an arbitrary complete bonological representation of G, a vector is smooth if first of all you can choose a norm such that you can kind of wiggle it a little bit yes. within this the ball of this norm and and its derivatives are all uh, bounded in this, uh, yes, yes. this norm. Yes, okay. there needs to be a norm such that it can be, so, so such that G is bounded with respect, so some local neighborhood of G is bounded with respect to this norm, and all of the derivatives also exist, and bounded with respect to the same norm. And this is the notion of smoothness that you need. And this notion of smoothness is one that's strong enough to give us the main theorem which is essentially this equivalence of categories, that smooth complete bonological G models are smooth complete bonological models over the space of smooth compact functions. Um, any questions? So green, yeah, so another thing. V infinity is not an adjoint functor to anything? Uh, of course it's an adjoint functor. It's a co-localization. It's a right point for the natural embedding of the category of smooth, uh, bon complete bonological representations inside the, the category of complete bonological representations. So unlike in the PID case, you cannot use this as a definition or because you, in the PID case, you, you can kind of cheat around and actually use it as a definition of the infinity. So, 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 so there, is, there is an alternative definition that 
may, maybe you would like it, you would like it better. There's a definition that I saw in a paper of Mayer that he said that, that, that instead of uh, going the route that I went of saying, every, which is very explicit, said that, uh, every um, vector needs to have some, uh, all of its derivatives bounded. Uh, he went around the other way and said, okay, let's just define the space of uh, functions of, of smooth functions from G to V, and and then and then, and then you can say that uh, G module is smooth if if if, if so, so so you have a, a, a if, if if well you can uh, an action of G on V gives you a map from V to functions on on on, on to, to functions from G to V, and you can say you say that V is smooth if this has smooth image. The image of smooth is the space of smooth functions. And then you just need to define what is this space, what is the space of smooth functions on G with values in the bonological vector space, in which case you just say, well, C infinity of G with values in V, you can just say that this is the colimit hmm? of it's a collimit of sheaves, actually. No, it's not a, it's not a collimit of spaces, it's a of sheaves of, on G. Yes. Because it only belongs to some VT locally, right? Yes, yes. So, so you just, you have, you have, you have, you have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you, you just write down this, um, you just write down this way. And that's that's an, an alternative definition that that to say that everything acts smoothly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's basically all I had to say. Does anyone want to say anything else? Uh, Gal, Gal, could you please repeat the last thing that is about this map V to C infinity G V? What? Uh, so, so, this this says when V is smooth. So when this map is what? So so no no. So if if V just has an action of G, then mm -hmm. abstractly there is a map from G to the space of all functions. Ah, so if it lands in C infinity functions, then. Uh, Yes. Then it is smooth. And C infinity functions is co limit of C infinity functions into VT. Yes. And for VT, there is only one definition. Yes. I see. I see. Uh, so uh, I saw in your lecture notes that you, um, Malyavan, you wanted to restate the main theorem and remark about locally split surjections. Yeah, but that's not, that's, that's, uh, just uh, so 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 just 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 I'm not going to restate the main theorem because we already uh, scrolled upwards and we discussed it. Uh, there's some mm -hmm. discussion about um, so 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 there is some subtlety that you need to take care of that happens both for topological and for bonological vector spaces. Bonological vector spaces don't solve all the world's problems, just most of them. Uh, which is that when you say something like define this relative tensor product, then you're essentially mm -hmm. taking the quotient. And, mm -hmm. and, and so there's a qu question of how good is your notion of quotient in the category of phonological vector spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. This category is, 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 is it's, it's a quasi, it's, it's, a, it's an additive category, but it's not quite what you would call in, uh, it's, 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 you can have two spaces that have the same underlying space and the map between them, which is not an isomorphism. Because you, can, because, because you have phonological vector spaces. So you have the mm -hmm. um, So there's a question of what kind of map do you really want to consider as a good surjection? Yes, it's a, there's an exact structure here that you may want mm -hmm. to define. So just this, this was, if I had enough time, I would have discussed the notion that uh, there's an, a good notion of uh, locally split surjections, that surjections that have a splitting over any, comp any, over any bounded subset are a good substitute for a good, or a good notion of uh, what it means to be, so, to be, to be a subjection. And, and in fact, this theorem, uh, in fact, it's actually possible to prove, however, that 
in the context of this theorem, you don't really need this extra subtlety. Uh, uh, all of uh, everything which satisfies just the naive notion of this is an is an isomorphism is automatically not just uh, 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 automatically not just that doesn't just have that um, that, that 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 a tensor tensor m to a to m is a surjection. It also has that this surjection is locally split. I see. What is the concrete content content of that? I mean, what does it mean on the level of function? Mm, sorry. You said that it's not just a surjection; it's more. So, what does it yeah. do? So, so, so what, what, if if you analyze the proof of the extreme Lyapunov theorem, then it actually it it actually follows from the classical proof as well that if your vector is selected inside a bounded subset, then you can choose the same F1 to Fn. So for every bounded subset of the Frechet space or the bordological space that you're working with, there are specific functions that you can choose that, that tell you just how smooth it is. So given some measure of how small your vector is, it is quantifiably, or it's, it has some quantifiable measure of, of, of how smooth it is. Uh, so, 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 so there's a fixed amount of smoothness that it satisfies in every bounded set. Very good. So, and this is, and this is, so, so but, but this, this, this exists in the classical book. Um, I want to say that the, the, the proof of this theorem of the generalization that I mentioned to monological vector spaces has absolutely no new ingredients. It's exactly the same as the classical proof. You just need to translate it and it works in general. It's very nice. Can, can you say a couple of words about the classical proof? Because I never understood it. Uh, so, okay, I can do this. Uh, uh, so, 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 essentially, okay, let, let me scroll down and I'll say a few words about the proof if the audience really wants it. But I, I, I warn that this is completely unrelated to anything else that's going on here. Um, essentially, the classical proof works as follows. Uh, you take this, so one of the reasons that I like this proof of smoothness is that it really lends itself well to the proof of the dixmir maliavin theorem. As we said, because V is smooth, then it is given as co-limits of these VT infinities inside VT. So basically the whole, the, the entire idea is that basically you take VT infinity and you, there's a map from some, some small neighborhood of G uh, I'm going to say, um, let, let me maybe say it like this. Some, there's a map from some small neighborhood of G. I'm writing it this way, but that's not really a correct statement. But anyway, there's a map from this times VT to VT or to, to some larger VT, but this doesn't really matter. And what we do is that basically inside here lies VT prime, uh, Golding. And basically the entire point of the proof is to try to find some lifting, just to try to lift this section into Tens of, tens, of, tens of V. In fact, tens of VT, fine. You just find, the, the, this map really is not necessarily well defined, but you just find an element here that covers you. And this is done by, 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 by basically by, by, by so, so you have some function such that all of its derivatives are bounded with respect to a specific semi-norm, and then you want to find some, fun, so, some way to tensor, to convolve it with something that keeps it smooth. So that, that, that gives it. So how do you do this? Well, so, so the idea is that you reduce to the case of uh, an action of Rn on, on, on well, well, G is just the additive group Rn. Since you're only taking a look at something that's very local, this doesn't really hurt you. And to say something about Rn is the same as saying something about R multiple times. So you really only care about the case of R. And once you have R, 
then you can say, uh, okay, so, so, so how, how do I do this? You have some function f and you think of it as a function of r. So, so, you, have, so you have some function, so you have this vector v and you have its derivatives, v prime, v double prime, etc. And the, the, they're all bound, all of this have, people have bounded norms. Yes, this is bounded by lambda zero. This is bounded by lambda one, etc. And what you do is that now you want to write something like this. You want to write um, some, so you, you want to write some differential operator. Um, so a zero plus a one times derivative plus a two times derivative squared. So this is some differential operator. So you want to say something like this times V times the inverse of this operator is equal to V. So the inverse of this operator, this operator is going to be something that's well-defined because it's, it's, it's a smooth thing. It's, it smoothens stuff. This is going to be the smooth function. And you just want this operator to, 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 have, to have a well abundant, to, to have a well-defined product with V. Now, it doesn't really have necessarily a well-defined product with V because the, the, the derivatives can be very large, but for every specific bounded set where you know that the specific vector doesn't increase when you derive it more than any quicker than some specific series, then you can take AIs that go to zero sufficiently fast that this product makes sense on the one hand, and on the other hand, that this inverse is still a smooth function. So in order to be a smooth function, what you really want is that, uh, uh, the, the, way that this is done, the way this is formally done is that you take Fourier transforms of both these operators. So this is a polynomial. So, oh, sorry. So, so, so this differential operator is actually a polynomial, sum AI x to the power of i, and you want this polynomial to not have any roots. So you just choose it to be some product of one minus x squared divided by b squared, where b i go to infinity very, very fast. And then this has no, has no zeros, so its inverse is a well-defined rapidly decreasing function because you can show that this thing goes to infinity fast when x goes to infinity. So this inverse is a smooth function. And then the, this operator is well-defined because the coefficients a0, a1, a2, etc., go to zero fast enough that when multiplied by lambdas, they still, they, they still converge. Thank you very much. Uh, probably it was very unclear and I apologize. So thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Gal, can I? Yes. So, uh, are you familiar with the category of uh, 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 how are they called? Fuck. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know what stereotype, category you Stereotype spaces. Stereotype, mm, stereotype spaces. What? Space? Stereotype. Uh, I remember the name. I cannot remember what it means. So this is this is a this is a theory developed by uh, Gbarov. It's a, it's a it's a category of space which you can view both as topological vector spaces with some properties and also as Bernalogical with some properties, uh -huh. which is very well behaved. It has well-behaved tensor products. It has well-behaved inner home. It has mm -hmm. a theory mm -hmm. of modulus over uh, certain type algebras. Blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and. It seems to me that what you're, uh, so, so, so the, 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 just so that I'm, I'm clear uh, about what kind of space I'm talking about. So, so the, the, the kind of Bernology that they have there is that, is that not of bounded sets in the sets of, uh, in, in the sense of von Neumann for the topology, but the so-called totally bounded sets. Sets whose closures ought to be compact, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it seems to me that you're, you're only dealing with uh, sets like that anyway, right? 
What do you mean? I mean, for, uh, for any vector, if you just uh, take uh, the neighborhood of the, uh, of the, I mean, you're, you're only dealing with locally compact groups, right? Mm -hmm. So any vector kind of locally generates only a, 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 a compact, Not just uh, so, so any 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 vector is bounded not just with respect to some uh, one of one of those generating sets, but with respect to actually a compact one. So I mean I, I don't know it it, it, it may it, I'm just I'm just suggesting that it it could be a good framework because it has, as I said, it has nice categorical properties and it has a well-behaved tensor product and an inner home. So it could be a, a nice kind of language to frame your result. Yeah, so, so it could just be exactly equivalent to what you're saying, uh, but I think I think I think I read about this at some point, but I cannot really remember what were my conclusions or what I thought about. Mm -hmm. it. Okay, uh, I'm just suggesting. So, no, 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 it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a good. It's a, it's a, I, I, I remember that I read about it, but I don't remember anything else. I apologize. Okay. Dora, did you have a question? No, I just, uh, I was just saying uh, thank you. Okay, so sorry for, for, for taking too much time. I, I had hoped to be uh, So, uh, okay.